from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. I am going to share with you one of my major knitting projects that's finished and finally off the needles. I probably started this on January the 2nd this year for a make-along. I knew there was no way I was going to have this pattern finished by the deadline of the make-along, but I've continued on because I really wanted to finish it because I plan to take it on my trip with me especially to wear around Edinburgh where it's really cold. So what was my project? Well, it was the Stephen West Starflake shawl. For Amanda Jane um, Mouse's mate, she had a Starflake shawl make along. And I did start it with it, and I knew I wouldn't finish it by the end of when everyone else did, but I've continued on. It's a paid-for pattern. I actually have this and two other Stephen West patterns on the go and hopefully I'll get all three finished this year but there you go it's the Starflake shawl now do you want to see it I will endeavor to try and show you the shawl on the video but there'll be some photos at the end because it's pretty big Ta -da! I'll stand up a bit there you go I don't know if you can see all that pattern the way it is now, I did make a few little mistakes, but to be honest, you'd have to be a professional knitter, a walk up and really be able to pick them. Um, when I first did the parallelograms, I nearly gave up. There's a couple of mistakes in the joining of those, but if I was to do it again, I definitely know how to fix that now and be better at joining them. To be honest, I wasn't sure I was right with this top, but that's how it finishes. I'm not sure I like that top, but that's the way it goes. Originally, it was just going to be in these two colours. Now, this and these ones. But when I did the parallelograms, I thought, gee, it looks a little flat. And then I noticed some of other people in the make-along were adding a third colour. So I decided to add a third colour, and it really lifted the shawl. Now, the reason it took me even extra time is I spent two days trying to get the brioche section to work and I couldn't. I nearly threw in the towel then, but there was the option to do the garter stitch, stitch section, which I chickened out and did. In the end, I decided I really wanted to finish it and the only way for me to complete it was to do garter stitch. And to be perfectly honest, I really like the look of the garter stitch to the brioche. But that is my shawl. It's big. It will keep me very warm in Edinburgh. It wraps around my neck. I can't put it around my neck today. I'm really hot. Um, we've had our one day of winter. It's been and gone. And we're back to heat again. But that is my Stephen West shawl. Now the pattern said for 375 mil knitting needles. If I was to knit it again, I would go down a size or two. I probably went with knitting needles that were a little big at 375 for me. I started out using chai goo needles and it kept slipping off. And then, believe it or not, I switched to Bendigo wooden knitting needles and that was the best. These are the cheapest needles I have ever bought. They're $4 a pack. And they worked a treat on this particular yarn and this size of project. The cord did buckle a couple of times, but once I straightened it, as the project got bigger, I straightened it in hot water, it would work. And once we had weight behind the project, they were fine. So yes, the Stephen West Stuff Lake Shawl. I'll do a bit of a yarn review on what I used. So I used... Morrison Sons Empire 4-ply in these three colours. Now this is yarn I bought when I was on holiday in Victoria. I bought a small amount to make a project and then I decided it was ideal for the Stephen West project and I went online and bought some more. The beauty of what I did was I requested with my order if they could give me the same dye lots it would be greatly appreciated and they did. They hunted down the same dye lots in what I had and sent them to me. I think that's brilliant customer service. Considering when I first went to visit the shop in Melbourne when we arrived, 
the girl there was a bit off-handed. She was busy talking to locals. She wasn't really interested in what I wanted to know. But when we went back to Melbourne before we flew back to Cairns and I went back in there, there was another girl who was really, really helpful. So all depends on the staff on the day. But the online service was brilliant. So this colour is called Iris. This is called Columbine. And this is called Lux. And I was on their site last night to get more of this. And it's out of stock. They have a really extensive colour range in it, which is really nice. And it is incredibly soft to wear next to your skin without an undergarment. It will be brilliant. They even say it would be great for baby projects, and I really agree. Now, I think it would. It's just beautiful yarn. My only thing was is if you like me and you rush a bit with the knitting and you're not careful, you can split it re really easily. But it's actually the operator of the tools, not the actual yarn. And I did actually crochet to see what it was like for a crochet project. So here goes, my little corner to corner square in the color iris. So this little corner to corner, every time I see Alex's from my yarny corner, she has a tutorial on a corner to corner. Every time I see it, I like it. So I decided I'm going to make these little squares and do her corner to corner. So this is her first square in this yarn and it crochets beautifully because I tend to not split yarn when I'm crocheting, only when I'm knit, trying to pick up speed with knitting. So there you go. It's a great yarn. I have a few notes on it. So it's sold in Melbourne, Victoria at Morris and Son. It's Empire 4-ply. They do have, which is fingering weight, they do have an 8-ply, DK 3-weight, and they also have an Empire 10-ply, which is um, Aran 4-weight yarn. So there you go. And I believe it's just as soft in whatever ply you buy. So recommended knitting needle seed, maybe that's where I should have looked at. They're 3 to 3.5 and the pattern called for 3.75 and I would have used probably a 3 or a 3.5 preferably for that pattern. It's 100% Australian super, super fine merino. Now even though it's Australian merino, it's made in China. It sells for, if it's only a 50 gram ball with 175 metres, I can't wear that out in yards. Um, it's $11.90. So it's not a cheap yarn as in, um, but it is definitely worth the money. You can machine wash. And so $11.90, which is about $7.90 US, about £6.32 and about €7.16. Euro. Um, there are 50 varieties in the colour. I can't believe that. Uh, what else did I put? Shipping from this. Now, shipping orders for domestic over $150 are free, $150 or under, they're $9.95. I'd found the shipping when I ordered online really reasonable and it got here really quick. They do have a Morrison Sun in New South Wales, in Sydney and in Victoria. They have an excellent range of crafting products. So there you go. I like this yarn and I probably would try it in other plies. Um, I didn't look at the price for the other plies but to be perfectly honest it's such a nice yarn and I do have this amount left over. I probably didn't need to buy another one of those and I was looking at another project and I really wanted to get more of this but it's out of stock. Lux is out of stock. So there you go, my Stephen West shawl. I can't believe I finished it. Ta -da. And I, for a person who's not fussed on purple, I really like the colourway. Um, that was the shock for thing. He went, you're knitting with purple? That's unlike you. But yeah, I think I, I didn't do too bad a job with the colour combination. So I hope you watch the pictures at the end. 
And yeah, you can buy Morris and Son overseas. I think what they do with it is the freight overseas depends on the weight of your order. And um, yeah, I guess the more you buy, the less the freight will be because they do, sorry, hiccups. I always get hiccups. They do offer discounts to really good customers. And um, yeah, their online service to actually hunt down and find me the exact dye lots was amazing. So there you go. I'm really, really proud of myself that I didn't give up. And I have to thank Amanda Jane Davies at Mouse's Mates. Her encouraging comments along the way when I was about to throw in the towel really kept me going. And when she suggested the garter stitch, stitch section, I thought, why not? I don't need to be a hero and do the brioche. I actually do have online a brioche workshop with Stephen West that I'll get around to doing one day. Um, he has lots of discounted sales on patterns and workshops. And that was one I decided I want to learn brioche, but I think I need to start at the beginning before I try and put it in a project. So thank you for bearing with me and, be and believing in me that I was knitting a major project. And yes, I still have more on the go. So I'll see you again soon. Take care, stay well, and make sure you have a crafty day. Bye for now.